some years ago I recently posted a video looking at my old droid sculpture which was a bit of a retrospective I had featured it in a sculpture exhibition that I had attended recently and someone asked about it in the comments so I thought well it'd be quite nice to do a little video about it but I hadn't really looked at for a while and um, this piece is from the same sort of era as it were and I thought it might be interesting to look at this one as well while I was going through the loft and sort of pulling out some of my older sculptures I saw this one and brought it down as well and because it's quite old, I sort of thought maybe it was a little bit rough, a little bit sort of um, not quite as refined as I might do now. But having taken it out of its box and got it set up, I'm actually quite um, pleased with it. At the time, I had remade my Lady of Pain sculpture. And this was made around the same time where I'd started using patination fluid to corrode brass and copper. So I really wanted to have another go using that technique because you can get some really, really interesting results. And I really liked the idea of adding corrosion to a face. So I kind of wanted to continue that idea but create my own unique character. Obviously the Lady of Pain is a character from the Dungeons and Dragons Planescape setting. So it's quite an iconic um, figure for those of us who are into that sort of thing. But I wanted to sort of use those ideas and create my own piece um, with that. So this is the piece I came up with, and as with many of the pieces I make, um, I'm sort of thinking of various characters um, in sort of sci-fi and fantasy um, for this. I suppose chief among them might be the Mouth of Sauron from the Lord of the Rings films. I've mentioned previously um, creatures without eyes, um, there's a certain something about them. Um, so I also find that helmets and sort of headdresses and things which cover the eyes also have a similar effect. So I really like that idea, and some time ago I'd had an idea for a character with an incredibly tall sort of headdress mask type um, setup so I was sort of um, wanting to incorporate those ideas into this piece and obviously I've been corroding metals um, recently as well so I thought bringing all of these ideas together would be quite an interesting thing to do. As with my old droid sculpture I decided to make the body out of Super Sculpey. That's a useful technique because you don't need to make moulds, you can just cook your final piece. But as I mentioned in the old droid video, the problem with Sculpey is it can sometimes discolour and it can sometimes crack. So while you do have quite a nice skin colour to work with, that can sometimes be ruined by the cooking process. But in this case I decided it wouldn't matter too much because although I wanted to keep the skin colour, I was going to have all of this uh, corrosion pouring down his body as though he'd been standing outside for years with the rain corroding the uh, face mask he was wearing and that corrosion running down over his body. So because I planned to paint a fair chunk of this model I decided it didn't matter too much if the Sculpey kind of discoloured when I cooked it or if it got burnt or anything like that. So this is the initial sculpture and I took as much time with it as I would any other sculpture. Although I knew a lot of the face would be covered I still wanted to include that detail in there. I think I've mentioned this before, it adds a sort of a degree of veracity to the sculpture that the detail continues beyond what the viewer will see. You know, maybe just adds an element of realism to it perhaps. So I fully detailed the whole face, uh, and as you can see he's got this bit of metal protruding from his forehead, and that's just the mount for the helmet. As you can see that just comes away quite nicely, and there's a piece of square brass tube just holding that in place. So I started shaping some thin brass and copper sheets to actually create the helmet. I'd recently got into soldering brass and copper together so I used that technique here to actually build this up. And I used some paper initially just to get an idea of the shapes of the piece before I started soldering the metal together. 
It's worth mentioning this design that I've put in the centre of the helmet here. I think this is actually an earring. I had a few of them in my bits box and I thought it was just kind of an interesting detail to add to this surface because it's kind of a bit of a flat, bare plane initially. I think what happened here is that this is actually maybe brass covered steel or metal, something like that, because while I was able to solder it to the copper quite easily, as you can see this has actually gone a rusty colour rather than a sort of a blue or green verdigris colour that you would get with copper and brass, so it's clearly a different type of metal to the rest of the piece. As you can see in this photo it's gone sort of um, rusty, but there's not much else to it, it's just a change of colour. But if you look at the later videos I've taken more recently, you can see that this looks like it's actually continued corroding over the years because it's gone quite sort of bubbly and rough, you know, on the surface, and that's actually quite pronounced now. Now, when I did the initial uh, patination of this, I added some patination fluid. Now to give a quick idea of how that works, this is a piece of the video from my Lady of Pain sculpture and what I'm doing here is adding some patination fluid to some metal and as you can see in the time lapse the patination fluid corrodes the brass and gives it that lovely sort of bluey green colour. Now what I found with previous sculptures is that this stuff can actually fall off unless you actually varnish it. So for this one what I did was to give it a layer of, um, I think it was a lacquer, uh, to hold all of this stuff in place. So I don't know if this is a reaction with the lacquer or whether some of the patination fluid was still active on the metal. But over the years this has just corroded even further from when I originally made the piece. So that's actually quite a nice result. And that's one of the things with patination fluid. You don't quite know what you're going to get. So there's a level of uh, variability, a level of randomness to it which is really, really nice. Um, so that's the fun of it really, just putting this stuff on and seeing what you get. And in actual fact, if you compare this photo to the video, you can actually see that the um, brass as well has continued corroding. So it definitely looks like the metal sort of furred up over the years, which is quite an interesting thing. So I guess these things sort of have a life even after you finish working on them. Okay, so I think that's it for this one. This was just a quick look at an older sculpture. So I hope that was interesting. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.